The world of American sitcoms has long drawn inspiration from a range of sources, but one of the most fruitful wellsprings of creativity has been the rich landscape of British television. Join Facts First as we present the best American sitcoms based on British TV series. All in the Family all in the Family stands as an emblematic American sitcom that was ingeniously adapted from the British series Till Death Us Do Part. The original UK series devised by Johnny Spate revolved around Alf Garnett, a character notorious for his obstinate and prejudiced views. Its American counterpart painted a similar portrait through the character of Archie Bunker, masterfully portrayed by Carol O'Connor. Alongside O'Connor, the series featured Gene Stapleton as Edith Bunker, Rob Reiner as the liberal Mike Meathead, and Sally Struthers as Gloria. Norman Lear, the creative mind behind the U.S. version, captured the cultural zeitgeist of the 70s, employing the show as a mirror to reflect societal issues like sexism, racism, and other prevalent prejudices. All in the Family didn't just amass viewers, it sparked conversations, controversies, and real-world introspections. Its groundbreaking approach to comedy became the foundation for several successful spin-offs, including Maude and The Jeffersons. Today, its legacy endures as a pivotal moment in television history. The Office The Office is an American mockumentary sitcom adapted from the UK series of the same name, created by Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. The British original, which aired from 2001 to 2003, was a groundbreaking show that utilized a documentary-style format to explore the day-to-day -day workings of a mundane office. When it was adapted for American audiences, the setting shifted to Scranton, Pennsylvania at the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. The U.S. version featured a diverse cast, with Steve Carell leading as the bumbling regional manager, Michael Scott. Other key cast members included Rain Wilson, John Krasinski, Jenna Fisher, and Mindy Kaling. Over its nine-season run, the show became a cultural phenomenon, receiving critical acclaim and winning multiple awards, including five Primetime Emmy Awards. The success of The Office in the U.S. not only cemented its place as one of the great American sitcoms, but also influenced the way sitcoms were created, with other shows adopting the mockumentary format. Its unique blend of cringe comedy, heartwarming moments, and unforgettable characters has created a lasting legacy. Sanford and Son Sanford and Son, a beloved American sitcom that ran in the 1970s, drew inspiration from the British show Steptoe and Son. The British original delved into the lives of a father and son duo running a rag and bone business with their generational differences often causing comedic friction. Transplanting this concept to the U.S., the series was set in the Watts neighborhood of Los Angeles, where the titular characters ran a junkyard business. Red Fox played the irascible, heart-attack-feigning Fred Sanford, while Damon Wilson played his son Lamont. Together, they navigated both personal and professional challenges, with their dynamic relationship at the core of the series. Over its six-season run, Sanford & Son achieved considerable success, becoming one of the top-rated shows during its time. Notably, it was one of the earliest U.S. sitcoms with a predominantly black cast, paving the way for other shows to represent black American experiences on screen. Three's Company Three's Company became an iconic American sitcom in the late 70s and early 80s, borrowing its premise from the British show Man About the House. In the UK original, a man shares a flat with two women, setting the stage for comedic misunderstandings largely stemming from the unconventional living arrangement. Three's Company brought this concept to a Santa Monica apartment, introducing viewers to a hilarious dynamic steeped in the societal norms and values of the time. The central trio of the show consisted of John Ritter as the bumbling but lovable Jack Tripper, Joyce DeWitt as the sensible Janet Wood, and initially Suzanne Somers as the ditzy Chrissy Snow. Their efforts to maintain their living situation, often by convincing their landlords that Jack was gay due to societal taboos of the time regarding co-ed living arrangements, provided a continual source of humor. The show was an immense hit, ranking among the top 10 for several seasons. Its enduring legacy is twofold. It showcased the evolving cultural landscape of America, highlighting the changing dynamics in gender relationship and societal norms, and it solidified John Ritter's status as one of the most talented comedic actors of his generation. Dear John, 
Dear John was an American sitcom that found its roots in a British show of the same name. The original UK series, created by John Sullivan, revolved around the travails of John Lacey, a man grappling with life after his wife leaves him for his best friend. The U.S. adaptation retained this core premise, introducing audiences to John Lacey, portrayed by Judd Hirsch, a teacher in New York whose wife unexpectedly leaves him. Reeling from this personal upheaval, Lacey finds solace in a support group for the divorced and separated, leading to comedic encounters and poignant moments. The American Dear John successfully ran for four seasons, largely due to Hirsch's commanding performance and the chemistry amongst the ensemble cast, which included standout roles for actors like Isabella Hoffman and Harry Grainer. While the show never reached the iconic heights of some of the other U.S. adaptations of British shows, it remains a fondly remembered sitcom from the late 80s and early 90s. Free Agents Free Agents was a short-lived American romantic comedy series based off a British show of the same name. The UK version, which aired in 2009, was set in a talent agency in London and centered on the budding relationship between two co-workers, played by Stephen Mangan and Sharon Horgan, who were grappling with their own individual emotional baggage. The U.S. adaptation transported this premise to a talent agency in Los Angeles, with Hank Azaria and Katherine Hahn stepping into the lead roles as Alex and Helen, two PR executives trying to navigate the complexities of love and heartbreak both personally and professionally. Though the American version retained much of the dark comedic tone and the emotional intricacies of the original, it struggled to find its footing with U.S. audiences. Despite having a strong ensemble cast, which included the likes of Mo Mandel and Al Madrigal, the show was canceled after airing just four episodes. Men Behaving Badly Men Behaving Badly was an American sitcom that tried to recreate the charm and humor of its immensely successful British predecessor of the same name. The UK version, which aired from 1992 to 98, was a cultural touchstone, chronicling the misadventures of two immature men, Gary and Tony, played by Martin Clunes and Neil Morrissey. It captured the essence of a certain kind of 90s British lad culture, pairing raucous humor with moments of genuine heart. The American adaptation featured Rob Schneider and Ron Eldert in the leading roles, endeavoring to replicate the camaraderie and childish antics of their British counterparts. But the show faced challenges in translating the specific British humor and sensibilities for an American audience. The series underwent significant changes after the first season, including recasting and altering the dynamic between the lead characters. It was canceled after two seasons. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite among these American adaptations of British shows? Let us know in the comments section below.